So why did you write the book, Is There Anything Good About Men? Well, for me, uh, my grand intellectual plan was to uh, move from my book on human nature to write another book on free will and understand that problem. So in between, I wanted to understand how culture, which is not a physical thing, can influence behavior, which is a physical thing. So I thought, well, let's look at how culture uses one gender. And, and, and for that, I could have picked either men or women, but there are already a ton of books about how culture exploits and takes advantage of women. So I thought, oh, it'd be a little more interesting and different to look at how culture uh, uses men. There's some interest there. Uh, since the 70s, there have been two dominant themes about people who write about gender. One is that women are just superior to men, and the other is that there's no difference. The no difference one has its advocates, but seemed less plausible to me. But it also didn't seem plausible that women would just be better across the board than men. I believe in trade-offs. I don't know why nature would make one gender superior to the other in all respects. But nature will preserve differences when there's a trade-off, when one thing's better for one thing and one thing better for another. So, you know, if you're a man, you read the gender research, you just notice that the men are never allowed to win. You know, you, whatever your finding is, you can say, it's fine to say women are better than men, but or to say there's no difference. But there are almost no studies uh, uh, coming out saying that men are better than women at this or that. So, well, there, there, what about spatial visualization research? Yeah, they'll, they'll sometimes concede that, but uh, it's not a, in terms of socially meaningful, interesting stuff. Uh, gotcha. There's very little there, and it's a, it's a strong bias in the literature. So I had, I had gotten thinking about men. I had this big article called The Need to Belong, arguing that one of the basic human motives is this desire to connect with others. It goes back to the theme of my career that we evolved to uh, you know, participate in social systems and relationships and so on. As a paper submitted that I got sent to me to review, uh, saying that, well, mainly women have the need to belong, that men aren't as social as women. And they, they made a pretty thorough case, but well, they're just looking at being social in terms of one-to-one -one relationships. And maybe women are a little bit more attuned to that. But if you look at large groups and social systems, those are almost all things that men do more than women. Men care more about big groups and their position in social hierarchy or stuff like that. So you make a case men are more social there. And that got me thinking, well, society uses men and women in different ways, consistent with the trade-off idea. So you start to look at the you know, different patterns. Um, so what, emotional expressiveness is one of the basic gender differences. Women express their feelings a lot more. So it's easy to say, well, you see, women are more social. They'll express their feelings to others and, and share them and then keep them hidden. But, okay, it's better to express your feelings in a one-to-one -one relationship because then your partner knows what you're feeling and can take care of you and do more for you and so on. But in a large group, showing all your feelings is risky. You've got rivals, you've got enemies, you've got coalitions. Maybe you're trying to buy a used car. And you say, oh, I love it. I've got to have it. Well, you're not going to get as good a deal as if you say, well, maybe. So the male pattern over and over is more evolved toward what's functional in large groups, and the female pattern more toward intimate relationships. That's why throughout history, women were very strong getting into our close intimate relationships and developing the skills and very good at that and so on. But, you know, you look through history, what have large groups of women done, whereas you know, compared to large groups of men is almost the mainstay of history. So that made me start thinking uh, that there are trade-offs and men and women are good at different things, molded by nature for somewhat different tasks different and uh, you want to say either gender is inherently superior they're just different but equal which is a theory that the field had never really uh, entertained seriously